Welcome pilots to this Jetworks build video. In this video we're going to be building the fantastic design with Craig Clarkson, Jazz 39 Griffin. Once you have your glues and um, tools at the ready, the first step is to choose your powertrain. I chose the 70mm FMS. Step 1, as you can see on uh, the belly panel, mark out from the plans where the side reinforcers are due to go. Small amount of glue on bulkhead number 1. Offer it up, pull it back and forward a couple of times just to allow the glue to get tacky to give a better bond. Next step in the guide is a forward fuselage support triangle and a corner reinforcers. Get the triangle, add a small amount of yu hoo pour, not too much, offer it up to the end of the markings and smudge it about on the belly fuselage just to ensure there's a good even coat. Moving on to the corner reinforcer strips and as I do in most of the, the builds um, where we're laminating parts I will use one end um, small amount of glue on it and again smudge it about just so there's a good even coating on the surface slide it off and then move it over to the outer reinforcer just give it a, a firm firm press and then we have a, a nice nice adhesion with just the right amount of glue applied just to form the corner parts or at the trailing edge moving to the, the triangle support piece you can use the corner of a table but here you'll see small pieces I'll just gently pull it through my hand between my forefinger and thumb just to give it that slight curve offer it up to the fuselage just to check the sizes um, the shape that you've got as close to possible then add some um, glue, whatever your choice, your preferred choice of glue is. Small even amount, spread a lot al along the length of it. And then like uh, I, I do, I'll add them off up to each other and then give them a, a, a good rub. Just it spreads out the glue, a nice even application all the way along it. Small dot of glue up against the bulkhead, just where the ends of the corner support pieces will meet. Offer up just to the lines, nice shape, and just move it into place, positioning against the, the markings that you've put on the belly panel. By doing it this way, there's just just the right amount of glue, and it gives it a, a nice quick adhesion. You, you're not waiting too long for excess glue to um, cure. Press it against it and you've got, yes, a, a nice nice firm bond. Next step in the build is the EDF shelf cap. As you can see here, I've got the shelf itself and the, the top piece. There is pre-markings on the, the shelf itself as to where the mitered um, spars will go. So I've just put on enough glue sort of in the same rough area as to where the spars will be put in once this is glued to the top turn it over and just allow allow it to set once it's set i'm using the pre-marked um, lines on it and just gently passing through with a couple of times with a sharp blade just on the lines to remove the excess foam as to where the, the spars will be for the wings and when they get put into the shelf and, and this part here is for support now I have also cut out an additional 3mm part of Depron later on in the build you'll see in the guide that you can actually add some tape to the underside just so that when you apply the glue with the wing spars and you, and you slot it into place it stops any glue from um, dropping down to the inside of the fuselage however here I've just chosen to use a small piece 3mm Depron cut to the same size apply some glue smudge it on as, as normal and then what I've done is just slide it forward just a, a, a tiny wee bit 
okay, maybe five, five six millimetres, apply an additional piece of glue um, just before that I offer up bulkhead number two to it. This way, with the wee lip at the bottom, it'll actually hold it exactly in place and I'm not getting any additional glue stuck to my build table. As you can see, we just offered it up back and forth a couple of times just till it gets nice and tacky, put it into shape and allow it to dry. Next step is the forward fuselage sides and the cockpit reinforcers. So on the plans, these parts of the trailing edges which go round the triangular support piece. There is lines on there um, and you can sand them away to get to the the angle that you require. It's, it's more than a four, 45 degree angle. However, I'm using um, just a nice sharp um, Stanley blade. When you're using blades, do, do be very careful um, and make sure that you are comfortable with using it. Once I've trimmed away as, as much as I think, um, just by visually looking at it to see that that's probably enough, I'll offer it up to each other just to try and again get the shape, trim off any excess to get it you know, as nice and flat and smooth a finish as possible. Once you're happy with that, on the edge of the table just form it, just gent gently um, pulling it across the edge with applying a, a small amount of weight to the top of it. Get a shelf panel, offer it up just to see if you've got the shapes that you're looking for and this just stops the foam um, or the Depron just pulling away once you've put the, the glue on it and you're hoping that it, it all sticks together nice and, nice and neatly in the shape that you're looking for. Just keep gently forming it to get that shape that you're hoping for. There is also um, a small um, marking on the, the side belly panel which obviously I've clearly forgot to remove. So here I'm just using a 6mm um, carbon fibre rod and just pushing it in um, gently and twisting it about to try and get the, um, the hole cut out. Hopefully at the right angle that I require. Here we are, just test fit. Putting both side panel pieces onto the EDL, or sorry, the receiver shelf. Happy with how it is. Then on the contact surfaces, just apply um, a, a, a good amount of glue. Slide there. Now that we're happy with the test fit, we know that it works, fits pretty well. So while that's um, just sitting there, I thought here, as as you who takes, you know, there there is a bit of time um, for a good bond. What I've done is I've pre-glued the the belly panel inside um, support pieces, allowing the air to get to it so that the glue starts to actually um, become more tacky, and then I carry on with the rest of the the side support pieces. On the trailing edge, just give it a good rub, nice even, even um, coating of the glue, offer it up to the belly panel, slide it into position, and do the same with the other side panel. I've pulled it away just to allow the glue to cure slightly, and then on with the second panel, do the same. Once you're happy with the fit, attach both panels to the belly piece, and apply some tape to hold it together just while the, you're allowing the glue to cure. Here I've turned it upside down, Applied some tape and allow it to cure before you move on to the canopy support pieces. So just offer them up to the fuselage. Just be sure that the side panels have cured and you've got a nice firm bond before we move on to adding the canopy support pieces. Offer them up to the fuselage just for a nice test fit. Make sure you're happy with it and then apply a small amount of glue again on one side and just make sure it's the mirrored sides that you're using. Inside the cockpit, small um, amount of glue on the bulkheads. Put the two cockpit side reinforcers together and smudge the glue in. This just gives it a nice thin, even application. Offer it up to the sides. Line it up so that the top's nice and flush on both sides of the, 
the canopy. Yeah, pretty good fit. Can add servo trays and the bridge panel lower is the next step. The bridge panel lower space, pretty simple. Just where the, the slots are, just add a small application of glue. The canard servo support tray, small amount of glue applied to one side of the, the foam and then offer both of them up together and smudge it about just to get a nice smooth, smooth finish. Put that to the side, let it set, while you move on to the bridge panel support tray, put that into the place and then just apply a piece of tape just to hold it in position and then moving on to the servo support tray for the canard. Just glue a small amount on the contact surfaces and then slide it into position. Just squeeze together the fuselage sides just to make sure that all surfaces are met. And then we're moving on to the bridge support panels, the middle and the upper, and also the nose corner liner. So here I have the bridge panels, both of them. Again, just like before, you can sand these down. However, I've chosen to just use a sharp blade and just gently trim away. For me, I find it's easier to um, remove them later on when I'm sizing up the, the canopy just to make sure there's a nice flush fit. It's easier for me to um, just sand stuff away rather than having to apply some filler and add extra to the, the fuselage. So a small amount of glue on the bottom of the bridge panel, slide it into place and then the same with the upper, slide that into place and, and just make sure it's all lined up perfect, allow it to dry. The nose cone, again, fantastic 3D printed nose cone. I have actually burst one on the field maiden launch when I launched the jet without arming the throttle. Not the best, however, um, the joys of 3D printing uh, means you can just print another one, stick it on and you're good to go again. Next step is attaching the 3D printed intakes. As you can see, just a small amount of yoo-hoo just along the contact surfaces. Doesn't, doesn't need much at all. Offer them up to the tabs on the side of the fuselage and just slot it in. Here I'm adding the canard um, control rod just to make sure it's all lined up and nice and even. That way there's um, no, no friction when it actually comes to operation. Small piece of tape underneath just to pull it together and hold it as tight as I can to the fuselage just to make sure that the contact surfaces are met all the way through curing. Moving on to the RX upper corner supports, very simple, um, just like I do with um, some some of the small forming parts, just offer it up, rub it between my thumb and forefinger just to see how, how the, the shape is and get as close to it as possible. Small application of glue on the bulkheads there and then just smudge it together just so there's a nice smooth even even layer of glue. As you can see it was quite stringy there and quite tacky that just means as soon as I put it on it's pretty much going to set. Next step in the guide is EDF bulkheads and we're actually going to do the EDF wing plate as well. So I have the 3mm ply forward bulkhead supported with 6mm Depron bulkhead. Attach, um, apply some glue to the belly panel then mount your EDF unit into the, the bulkhead. So here I've put on the, the rear one first just to make sure it's a nice fit and then followed by the forward support bulkhead. Applying some glue to the, the tabs where it meets the contact surfaces. Once you're happy that that's there then just attach it to the belly panel. Moving on to the wing plate again make sure you're working with a flat surface using some low tack masking tape, cover your um, areas that are due to be um, held and, and gluing your carbon fibre rods in place. Now at this point I've left all the the foam on the inside just to make sure that you know the, the measurements and everything all meets up nice and even. 
then gently remove the foam where your support spars, the carbon rods will fit. Test fit the carbon rod there, quite happy with that. Moving on to the rest of the wing plate and gently removing the excess depron there. Trying not to cut through on, on the tape. So here I'm just using some batteries just to flatten down the wing plate, make sure that the natural curves are, are leveled out. And as always, when we're using a large amount of um, epoxy, use a set of scales just for the measurements to make sure that it's accurate in both the, the hardener and the resin. Again, good thorough mix. And then start applying it to the wing plate where your carbon rods will go. Be as careful as possible, but make sure that you've got a good good amount of glue goes into the spaces there. Leaving the space in between in the center where the EDF units are um, due to go. Then just teasing out the glue to the end of the surfaces. Squeeze in the horizontal one and then the, the, the wing plate ones. And a quick tidy up with a scrap piece of foam. Add some additional epoxy to the top where um, there is some gaps. Just spread it across the carbon spar. And then again, just a wee quick tidy up. Removing any of the excess glue. Finish off with the batteries just to make sure it's nice and flush. And leave it to cure. This is 20 minute epoxy. Once it's cured, remove the centre section where the EDF unit and intakes will go and then just gently pull away your low tack masking tape and there you have it. Here I'm just trimming away some excess um, epoxy that slipped and um, oozed out so that when we come to attaching the wings there should be no issues whatsoever. Remove the servo supports. So now the wing plate's done, that leaves us with the fuselage sides. Now here I'm um, again just trimming it up as there's pre-markings on it. Here I'm using the 3D printed parts. If you were just forming them um, and using the laminated sections you would just leave it there leave these pieces attached. Ailerons. Yeah, so there's a bit that's it's not actually in the guide here. So, with speaking to Craig, he had suggested that the ailerons should be longer, more scale-like, and down closer to the tail of the fuselage. So, here I'm using the, the edge of the... Um, the intake sides just to get an even marking and then just gently cutting through a couple of passes and these these pieces that we're cutting off these will be added to the ailerons so that there's a full control surfaces where the servo um, arm would be attached and your push rod would come out to the ailerons the, there would there would be a shortage there. So, as I say, as Craig's um, suggested that when it comes to attaching the servo arms and control horn, there is no stress or angles put onto the control rod. It's, it's straight from the arm to the control surface. After securing the additional piece, it's time to move back to the fuselage sides. So once you've got the pieces, just have a uh, a wee test fit. Once you're happy with that, just add a small application of glue to the contact surfaces and then slide it into position. Once you're happy, it's nice and neat, just set it to the side and allow it to dry and move on to the, the other side of the wing plate. Scoop away any of the excess glue and again just Leave it, allow it to cure. Now we're attaching the wing plate. 
So here I'm um, mixing just some more epoxy for securing the wing plate into the RX tray where we pre-cut additional slots. Here I'm just putting a, a small amount of Yoohoo into the EDF bulkhead at the ply mount and then turning the fuse lash to the side where we pre-cut the holes in the RX tray filling that with some um, epoxy just being careful not to have too much add some to the end of the carbon fibre spars and then just tease into position now this can be quite tricky as you're having to move one end in slowly and then the other end at the EDF mount head um, bulkhead sorry um, can be quite tricky so just take your time and make sure you have it um, lined up again on the other side small piece on the front where it meets the, the EDF intake and just tease it into the slot that we pre-cut and then again slide it into the EDF bulkhead and just allow the epoxy to set here I'm putting in the EDF unit just to make sure it's all nice and even and lined up I've got a mount in a battery in the battery tray just to mount it up a couple of spare boxes um, just to make sure that we have the wing plate nice and level next step in the guides the Elevon reinforcers and the lower fuselage diagonals so here using a small amount of Yuhu on one side of the Elevon reinforcer and just smudge it around make sure it's nice and smooth and even and then apply it to the the wing surface flipping it over I'm removing the EDF unit here just so it's ease of access on the contact surfaces a small amount of Yoohoo right along the edge and then just a wee test fit off the diagonal side as you can see it's quite stringy if you just allow it a couple of seconds to um, get more tacky I've applied a bit of hot glue here and the reason I'm using that is I don't want it to pop off so once the hot glue's um, sealed at the front and it's set, only takes a couple of seconds, just on the EDF mounts itself on the side panels. Again, another thin bead of hot glue and then push it together. While that's setting, the Yuhu will have made contact and we'll be curing and then with with the use of the hot glue there's no um, reason that it's going to pop off and it'll be nice and secure so here we are forming one of the side panels diagonally as as we pull um, it straight over you get a nice nice round curve if you pull it over diagonally you can see that you get a twist So again, just offering it up, got a nice test fit. I've already applied some um, Yuhu pour there. Quite happy with how it looks and just smudging it about just to make sure that all the contact surfaces are um, coated. Again, just right at the front um, where it meets up with the EDF intake, a small thin bead of hot glue and that attaches it there. And then moving on to the... EDF panel mounts the bulkheads just thin again thin application not too hot and then hold it together flip them over so at this point chose to look at the inner surface of the intakes and add a small amount of Yuhu again just along where the belly panel meets against the diagonals just for a little bit of extra support there 
and same on the other side. This was just a personal choice, it's not part of the plan. So moving on to attaching the ailerons now that we've added the additional piece. Just trimming some thin slots with a sharp blade in the control surface itself and I'm using a fibre tape hinge. So with using the two hinges, a small amount of um, yoo on both sides and then just rubbing them up together to get an even application. Offer them up to the wing where the hinges are and mark on the wing plate where the hinges are due to slot in. Again with a sharp blade, following the lines that you've marked on. Just trim, trim away just a, a small, a couple of millimetres over the size of the hinges which allows you to just slot them in and um, shiggle them from side to side. So here I'm using a small amount of yoo on both sides of the hinges and rubbing each aileron together to make sure there's an even application. Slide in at the pre-cut slots and allow the, cure, the glue to cure. Moving on to the next step, the EDF printed intakes and the thrust tube. So here just test fitting the thrust tube using a wee pen just to push it down to the bottom of the belly panel and making sure that I'm happy with the, everything. Sizing up where the ESC is due to go and I have actually cut a larger hole on the top of the printed intake just to allow the larger um, ESC as I'm using a 6S set up here. So I've marked on the, the belly panel where the intake goes, applied some glue on there and the, the flange ring so that when I, I put it in place it meets up with all the surfaces using a pen, pushing it down onto the belly panel, onto the side supports just to make sure that it's, it's stuck pretty good. Just moving it in its shape with my and in, in, in place with my fingers at the EDF forward mount. Yeah, happy with that, and then just allow it to set. Insert there your chosen EDF unit. Just gently as the back, the the rear, and um, bulkhead is just foam, and just offer it up to the front so it comes flush with your thrust tube intake and square it off so it's nice and even here I'm just applying a small bead of hot glue just around the intake and the, the bulkheads just to secure the unit itself on the thrust tube I've already cut a small hole on the tube to allow the the wires for the motor to to come through a small amount of glue on the the lip of the thrust tube and just let it go off um a few few minutes and then the tricky part is getting all the wires through the unit once you've got your wires through just offer it up to the, the bulkhead. I actually put an additional flange on there, um, just made with 6mm Depron foam, just so that um, it was nice and flush against the rear of the EDF unit. The unit I'm using is obviously quite larger than the one in the plan. And then moving on to electric. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, I got another corrupt file. However, as I've been checking it, got as I was going along, I've went back and I've filmed it. You can see the the canard servos in place. We have the battery connection running through into the fuselage bay. All the wires moving into the receiver, sitting on, on top of the RX panel, which I will tidy up. Um, we have the ESC and the motor wires all secured onto the thrust tubes just so they're not flapping about. 
the servos for the ailerons um, coming through and up and over the intake into the RX um, receiver tray itself. Just a bit of fibre tape securing things down. Next in the build is the fuselage top, securing that, and the upper fuselage diagonal sides. So here on the, the tail piece, that's the exhaust mount, I had 3D printed the mount and Craig had also mentioned to me that once you've secured this and it's in place, when it comes to sanding, um, you will be sanding through um, and, and missing some parts of the plane. So here I've cut some 20 millimeters by 10 millimeters strips of Debron and just cut them at an angle um, around about 30 degrees or something, just as close as I can to match it to the, the shape of the exhaust bulkhead. Then I secured the exhaust bulkhead to the end of the thrust tube and used two or three of the, the small pieces that I cut and secured them to the inside. So here we have the fuselage sides, just a quick um, mark up next to the fuselage just to see that it fits well. Um, smooth application of Yoohoo along all the contact surfaces um, and some on top of the ESC there as well, just so that everything's um, secured. Place it down on the airframe and push it into position and just hold it just until the glue cures. Here we are along the sides, I'm ready to put the side diagonals in place. Not forgetting some glue on the, the thrust tube intake along to the exhaust and again where the control surfaces meet up. Offer it up, quick test fit looks pretty good happy with that and again out with some um, hot glue just onto the exhaust bulkheads sorry the EDF bulkheads hold that in place let it set a couple of minutes and exactly same on the other side for the diagonals at the front there I'm using Yoohoo um, not hot glue, the only place I put the hot glue on was the EDF mounts. Just be careful not to put it over the wires or get it close to them. Offer up your diagonal sides, put it in place and hold it across. Um, apply some pressure over the EDF bulkhead. Quick twist, shape it into the side, just adjust some things. Adjust how it looks on the, the engine mount at the back. Sorry, the exhaust mount. And just squeeze it into position. Happy with that. Next step is the canards and the magnet panel. So I have the canard um, control rod, the 6mm carbon rod. Um, moved it in, made sure it's free and marked it off with a bit of tape there just to see how much I need. Now in the plan it talks about 3mm um, screw ends. I had some screws, cut the ends off it and then put them in, in a vise and just bent them to the shape that we needed. So I have the, the canard trays there as well. Um, I've cut a small piece of the carbon rod just enough to fit into the, the canards. Those pieces, just a small amount of the, the Yoohoo, sorry, not Yoohoo, um, the epoxy into the holes and then just gently push in the screw and be careful not to push it straight in past the, the bends that you've actually made in the screws themselves. Just a wee bit of extra glue on it. Twist the rod around. And here I've set it on the... Um, piece of Depron with the, the threads hanging down away just until it cures. Then we'll move on to the canard leading edges. With a sharp blade just trim away some of the corner pieces and then what we'll do is we'll just gently sand that off just to get a nice finish and a round leading edge to the controls. Mix up a small piece of epoxy, have some masking tape laid out and then 
insert some epoxy into the control rod and then using the threaded end that we've just created insert that and apply it onto the masking tape just lay it down and let it cure once it's cured small quick test fit into the fuselage make sure there's no um, abrasion while, um, while it's moving get your control surface apply a small piece of the low tack masking tape to the, the underside a little sand down of any excess um, epoxy that's there just to get a smooth, smooth movement add some fresh epoxy, get some mixed up and then look at the angle of the control rods that you've just made up try and get it as level and parallel as possible here I'm using the straight lines on the, the build surface just to get um, a, a flat um, straight angle so that I'm, I'm happy that it's as close to it as I'm going to get add some additional um, tape on the top because this is the where it's actually going to show you want it as nice and clean a finish as possible add your epoxy, smoothen it off remove the tape and allow it to cure we test on the um, excess epoxy that we had there before we decide to remove the tape just to make sure that it's all set once you get the tape off, any excess epoxy that's there, just try and trim away as best as you can. If there's anything on the control rod, just again, just be sand. Get remove as much as you can. We test fit in the position. Here I'm just sanding away the edge of the canard that meets up with the, the fuselage itself, just to see that I'm quite happy with it. So here we've got the push rod set Z, Z bend pliers and just measure out the length that we need trim that away and using the drilled out control arm attach the Z bend and offer it up to the control rod happy with the size that's there and then just attach it to the canard control rod slide it into place also have our drilled out prop adapter once you have the control arm onto the canard push rod slide the pre-drilled prop adapter on as well just for a bit of extra security once you've got them um, together and lined up, just add a small amount of CA um, glue and using a thin pair of pliers, pull them together and that way you've got a nice, nice tight fit. Allow the CA to cure. And we only have one side here attached. It's not actually um, hooked up to the servo itself. So we're fine at the moment for positioning. Tape up the other canard. Because this, this part is going to be the top surface where you're going to see. Use some of the epoxy and just gently add a small amount to the inside there. And the other side of the canard screws that we meant. Make sure that the screw is pointing upwards and with an additional piece of carbon rod just put that onto the end so that you can try and get the, the right angle and again like we did before using the lines on the build mat try and get it as, as close to um, as straight and the angle that you're hoping for to match the other side of the, the canards add a small amount of epoxy on the top and then just scrap piece of foam just remove any excess that's there remove the tape and allow the epoxy to cure hopefully leaving the the canard screw at the right angle and the right position allow it to cure and then before you go removing anything just have a quick test on the spare epoxy that's there see that that's set and then pull away the additional piece of carbon rod remove the tape and if there's any um, again excess epoxy that's spilled out just gently trim it away
offer it up to the carbon rod position. Mix up another small amount of epoxy. And before you apply any, just make sure that you add some um, tape to the, the intakes just so that if there's any um, spillages of epoxy, it doesn't go on to the fuselage itself and glue it um, solid. So just be careful when you're adding the epoxy here. Try not to get any on the, um, the side panels. Offer up your canard. Once you've got it there, I taped it in place, just hoping um, and having a look to see that I get the right angle. Before you attach the magnet panel, just be sure you've centered your servo for the canards and you've um, secured it with your grub screws or whatever it is you choose to use. Next step is the exhaust nozzle and as you can see from earlier um, I had printed the nozzle and like we discussed there was additional parts went on the inside of the, the frame just so that when it comes to sanding we're not sanding through the fuselage leaving holes. So a wee bit of um, yoo-hoo on the end of the um, exhaust nozzle and round the rim and just twist it about so there's an even application. Next is the, the canopy. Fortunately enough, um, as I was going through the build, um, Craig managed to release uh, a Depron build canopy, which I hope you'll agree, if you've seen mine, is absolutely fantastic. Very easy, simple build. The sheet that it comes with, um, printed off on um, an A4, and there's a wee diagram there that comes along with it to show you how it all goes together. But as I say, it's, it's, it's very simple. So there's the, the back part of the canopy um, glued together. Here's the seat rest, or sorry, the, the back rest. Um, this also helps support the plastic canopy if you choose to use one as well. test fit in the small 3D printed um, cockpit parts as well. Here I just printed them off in PLA, um, get a very good print. Obviously with the lightweight PLA there's a lot of string in it and when you're printing fine um, pieces like that it will require a lot of cleaning up. However, um, knowing that I've um, overhyped this one with a 6S um, setup, um, I had no worries about power. Um, and add an additional weight of a 3D printed canopy cockpit. So just carrying on, bits of glue here and there just to secure it. Once I'd put it together I thought right okay well maybe I'll a little bit of extra glue there and a little bit of extra glue here. Here we are with the cockpit nose, the dashboard. on the display panel here. I'm using Yoohoo, just excited and carried away, trying to get it built and ready to go flying. Usually I would use CA glue, but I had Yoohoo in front of me and carried on using that. As you can see, there is a wee diagram there and it's quite easy to follow. So glue the bottom of the seat, press it against it and just make sure you allow time for these parts to set in between. And this is how it looks once it's all prepared. I've printed the wee pilot, put them inside. With the clear canopy, it looks fantastic. Got a wee bit of perspex there just for the, the display, just to let you see how it's actually turned out. Moving on to the next stage, which is sanding in the build guide. And as you've probably seen through the build, I've, I've jumped back and forward. Uh, here I've already got the, the side panels attached to the fuselage and the tails not on it and um, the vertical stabiliser sorry. The reason for that is when it's um, I'm sanding the last thing I want to do is bash the tail or put dents and stuff in it. So as I'm working through the build guide I also um, have a look at a couple of steps before it um, to see what's next. And next is the vertical stabiliser and the stabiliser sides. 
So the slot that's um, due to accept the one millimeter, one millimeter carbon spar, tape one side and then have some small pieces of tape on the other side where you're about to put in the, the spar. I'm using um, Yuhu Paw here, just a wee squeeze of it along the seam using a scrap piece of foam. Just drag it along and press it into the, the gap that's created for the spar. Just a little, a little touch more on the spar itself and then press it into position. Again using a scrap piece of foam, just trim it away. You remove the excess tape and here I've placed a battery on it to make sure it's kept level and allow it to set. So moving on to the vertical stabiliser. As you can see now it's all sanded. I'm now I'm mixing up some epoxy. Spreading a good liberal amount on the 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 slots that go into um, the the top top piece, and all the way along the seam where it both makes contact to the the fuselage and the vertical stabilizer itself. Just make sure that when you offer it up to the fuselage, push it nice and firmly into the slots, and make sure that the the long fin that reaches along the um, fuselage itself um, touches. The, the main the main deck. Again with the sides, small application of Yuhu Power, squidge it along, remove any excess from the bottom, just spread it about with a scrap piece of foam, offer it up to the fuselage and stick it together. Just make sure you press it down onto the fuselage itself so you've got a nice clean finish. Next step, um, UF, UHF antenna and the vertical stabiliser intake. As you've probably seen, it's already on the vertical fin. However, this was me earlier on in the build, just measuring where it should be, putting some glue on it and applying it, making sure it's stuck, measuring it out so it's in the right position. Next step, blended lower wing and the upper wing. Again, this is already been done um, prior to attaching the stabiliser and I, um, like I was saying that's just um, me jumping ahead in the guide just to make sure that um, I'm not putting any dents in anything when it comes to sanding. So a nice smooth application on the, the, lower, the lower blender, both sides. Press it firmly into the wing and as you can see there, we're also putting it onto the extended um, ailerons as well, making sure that the glue adheres to that before we actually cut into the ailerons. Blend the top half, spread it about again, attach it to the fuselage and give it a good press, make sure it's pushed into position. The next step in the guide is the upper and lower wing transition parts. Here I've already attached one but on the, the final side as you can see what I've used is a, a very thin bead of hot glue so that when um, I offer it up to the wing and push it into position, hold it for 30 seconds it's pretty much stuck. Due to it being a, a small thin piece of foam um, I wasn't wanting to use Yuhu and just um, tape it up and end up having it um, sliding about and possibly in the wrong position. So used a wee bit of hot glue. Not a lot of sanding is getting done at the back there. However, the top piece I'm applying that with um, attaching it, sorry, with Yuhu port and sticking it, moving it into position and making sure I'm happy that it's um, level with the wing plates. And we're pretty close to it now. Looking fantastic. There she is. Don't forget the antenna. So there's the antenna printing off. The joys of 3D printing. Ready. Thanks pilots. I hope this video has been helpful to those of you who's um, chosen to watch it. I've added some additional slides here 
of how I've finished off the griffin. And as you can see on the first one there, after I've laid down the the base coat, you can see moving from um, the, the sanded finish, that's not actually quite smooth, to putting down the base coat, you can see the roughness actually come through. However, if you rub it down from 320 to 400, possibly even 600, if you choose to use wet and dry, then in between each coat, um, give it a good sand so that it's ready for the next layer. Here I've added a light application of filler, just trying to smooth out any of the dents or some of the seams in, in the joints and try and get it as smooth as possible. And again, sanding it down with some um, 400 in between. Once you've got that done, um, another coat of paint and start to actually get your colours down. Again, once you've got one layer down, a good rub on with the next layer of paint and I just use cheap acrylic paints from the local hobby crafts shop um, and I apply it with a brush. Once you're happy with how it looks after a couple of coats, tape it off if you're choosing you know a, a certain design, add your next colour on top of that. Again in between giving it a small sand down with some 400 or 600 and just work up your finish till you get what it is that you need. Wishing you all the best of luck with the maidens in this awesome model.